things I wanted to talk about is this decision to start medications or not. Right now, when you are diagnosed with Parkinson's through your, with your neurologist, one of the first things that he or she tends to recommend is levodopa or dopamine replacement. And for a lot of people, it's really scary. You get online and you start looking at side effects and you start seeing rumors about you only get 10 good years and things like that. And uh, people are really hesitant to start medications. Um, given the very few options that their neurologists or diagnosing physician tends to give them, um, it's scary when you're told, um, just trust me, take this. And so people go home, they start looking at online, and there are a lot of reservations about if to start and when to start. And for some people, there's even some sort of a um, pride in being able to see how long you can go without medications. And so really what I want to talk about today is, is should you start medication, when should you start medication, and um, maybe ways to make it work better, um, get more bang for your buck, per se. So by the time you are diagnosed with Parkinson's, you've probably had this disease a couple decades. 10, 20 years is, is kind of what most of a, the neuroscientists think at this point. Um, many people have had non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's long before they developed a tremor or stiffness or rigidity or hunched posture or anything like that. And so um, we know that, that the diagnosis of Parkinson's comes very, very late in the disease. Um, when we do autopsies on people with Parkinson's, it looks like by the time you've been diagnosed with Parkinson's, you've already lost about 50 to 70 percent of your body's brain's ability to make dopamine. So you are coming to this really late. Um, I know that sounds scary. I also think it's kind of fascinating or almost empowering to realize that you had half of your dopamine production cells gone last year and you didn't even know there was a problem. You don't need them all to be able to do what you need to do. Um, it's not like the goal is 100%. You can actually live a very full, healthy, happy life with only 50% of your dopamine cells functioning. So it's, it's not the end of the world that we're coming to it when we are, um, but I do wanna make sure that you understand that point because there's not a lot of wiggle room. And so uh, one of the things that people will come to me as a alternative medicine physician, people come to me wanting alternatives to the pharmaceutical drugs. And I think it's really important to talk about why you would want that, what that means, and is that useful. So the first thing I will say is I think dopamine replacement is important. Um, I've been studying nutrition for 20 years now. And what I like to do is, is kind of think of, of dopamine, I mean it's a neurotransmitter, right? It's a naturally occurring molecule. And so, so if you were deficient in any other naturally occurring molecule, you would replace it, right? You know, if you had a vitamin C deficiency, you would take vitamin C. If you had a B12 deficiency, you would take B12. If you had a problem with your adrenal glands making cortisol, we give you cortisol. I mean, there are ways to augment the body's inadequacies so that you can go on to live a normal, healthy life. When we tell you that you are deficient in dopamine, it only seems logical to replace dopamine. I don't think you do yourself any favors to kind of play this game. I'm gonna see how long I can be deficient before I give my body what it's been asking for probably for years. So, you know, I, I think that my personal opinion is by the time when you're diagnosed, I, I think it's pretty important to get started on medications early. Um, we've done some studies, even re very, very recently, a study just came out um, that really asked the question, is there a benefit to delaying the start of medications? If you start meds today, if you stall and start meds in six months, 12 months, 18 months, are you better off? And what we learned is that uh, dopamine replacement does not in any way accelerate the course of the disease. Um, dopamine replacement does not slow the progression of Parkinson's disease, but it does improve your quality of life. And that's really what we're going for. We are going to address 
the rate of disease progression as an entirely different topic. Um, what we're talking about here today is improving your quality of life and giving your body what it needs to function. So I think that there, that's a really important point to talk about for people. When we talk about treating Parkinson's or what are you doing for your Parkinson's or people email me, what supplements should I take for Parkinson's? I think it's really important to, to think about these as very different questions. Um, how do you treat the symptoms of Parkinson's is a very, very different question than how do I stop this disease from progressing. So, so when today's topic, this has nothing to do with progression. We are going to uh, address that topic entirely separate in a different video. Today we're just talking about hiding your symptoms, treating your symptoms adequately so that you can get on with your life and improve your quality of life.